hello and welcome to the CSS Podcast. This season, we're answering your most burning CSS questions. And today we're covering a very common CSS issue. Why do I have layout shift here? One of the key core of vitals which measures UX performance is CLS or cumulative layout shift. And it measures the instability of a page's content, scoring experiences low if the content is unstable, shifting around, jumping and moving while you're trying to read or interact with it. So CLS measures how much visible content shifted in the viewport and by how far those things moved. Awesome recap. The worst offender of this being that moment when you were just about to click a button, but then the layout shifts and the button that was under your mouse is no longer under your mouse. It's like the worst case uh, is a new button that's put there and you just you click the wrong thing. You're like, I didn't want to click that one. My mouse was clearly where. Ah, anyway, it's really, really frustrating. It's also annoying when you're trying to read something and then it goes away. It, that, that's the annoying one. Totally. Too. You're like reading that headline. You're like, how to do it? And the hero image loads. And you're just like, where was I in this paragraph? I was somewhere. Yeah, the ad loads in. Now I'm gone. Jeez. <laughs> so in today's episode, we're debugging it and labeling various things that can cause cumulative layout shift. So here's a high level of those main offenders. There's images, iframes, or ads that don't have dimensions. There's ads, embeds, and late loaded third-party components or content. There's animations and also fonts can be contributing to CLS. Yeah, and with those items in mind, uh, I'll start with at like a high level, it's worth distinguishing the types of layout shifts. There's load layout shift, which you kind of even mentioned them here. You were like, there's late loaded content and there's like stuff without dimensions. Anyway, they have a name. Um, there's a load layout shift and post load layout shift. And you can expect, uh, oh, there's also expected layout shift where like the user invoked it. Like I did a thing, I changed the tab. Of course the layout should shift and I should not be, um, you know, like that one I'm expecting. So anyway, those are the three main ones. Yeah. And each of these types are played out in various ways, uh, which we're gonna go over. And so uh, load layout shift happens while at load time, but specifically it's up to five seconds after the page loads. So when CLS is being measured, it looks at what's happening for those first five seconds. Uh, and that's called the load layout shift phase, I guess. Anyway, there's a post layout shift. Uh, that's the phase that happens after that. So that's anything after five seconds and expected layout shifts like the ones we talked about where the layout shift could even be desired, right? Changing a tab, I scrolled something, I selected a new element that changed the whole thing. Anyway, that's the three different high level types of CLS that we have. Lots of different types of layout shift. So I'm glad that you pointed that out, especially when it's expected. That's that's a little different. Yeah. So we mentioned the main offenders. Um, let's break those down a little bit more. So the first was the image load layout shift. And that's mostly from images without any sizing attributes. We talked a little bit about images and how to make sure that they're not uh, distorted and how to make sure that you're optimizing them in the last episode. So check that out too. But the browser will discover the image size later and apply it as soon as it's known, which is probably just in time to interrupt your reading. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of layout shift. Um, but this is mitigated by specifying the sizes of your images on the image tag itself with width and height. And it's important to point out that these sizes aren't um, direct, they're soft. So they can still be adjusted um, and they're primarily used for telling the browser the aspect ratio of the image. So you can also use aspect ratio for this by setting an aspect ratio style on the image. And this can be used to allocate layout space for the image before it actually has any pixel data to show or learn from within that media. So it just the container div knows the size that it needs to save for that image to load. So putting sizes on your images is really good for lazy loaded images, whether that's from JavaScript or HTML, as the sizes will place hold that space for the image while it's being lazy loaded or using the aspect ratio property to do the same thing. Awesome. Another main offender is JavaScript loading widgets lazy, right? So we've got ads, images, or iFriends, iframes, iFriends. <laughs> we got iframes. images or iFriends. Uh, we should call iframes iFriends from now on. <laughs> I <laughs> All those are not usually friendly. Um, but yeah, these same things, just like images, it's made worse if they don't have sizes on them, right? You can put sizes on an iframe, you can put sizes on your images, uh, sizes on your widgets, especially if they're lazy loaded. This can allow that pre-allocated space, right? Your place holding. And if you don't know the size of the ad or, you know, or whatever it is, which is probably unlikely because ads are purchased by size, but in, let's say it's an iframe, yeah. you don't know what size it should be. You should still place hold something uh, because having something is better than nothing. Uh, you can incur less 
uh, CLS bad scoring, like it less penalties if the image is only shifted a few pixels versus it's shifting a whole bunch of pixels. So some is still better than nothing here, even if it's really dynamically lazy loaded. Yeah, that makes sense. So also speaking of lazy loading, um, lazy loading CSS or fonts or even grid definitions can manifest in a couple of ways. So if we talk about fonts like lazy loading, fonts can adjust how your page looks from every single line of text. So a different font can result in different line wrapping, uh, which means that post load of a new font can not only visually swap characters, but it can also change line lengths and line heights and overall page content. And it could even be as bad as a, a large headline wrapping onto a new line because it might have been wider font um, with this new font, which can cause a pretty large jump in page height. On my website, I have like 120 pixel fonts for headings. I have really big headings. <laughs> Another issue could be font weights, where a bolder font will consume more space and maybe cause new lines to wrap as well. And finally, lazy grids are where the grid CSS is loaded late and causes a visual jump when it's loaded and has created the rows and columns. And this is also particularly bad because that can cause a whole slew of different types of elements to shift and cause cumulative layout shift. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, CSS, we don't always think of being a main offender, um, but it can be an offender in a lot of ways. Like another way is we've got grid layouts uh, getting its sizing from children. So maybe just even the grid definition was late and that caused CLS. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a grid that only knows its size because it's looking at its children and its children were lazy and well, ah, I just caused this rippling effect of CLS. <laughs> and so while grid may be the cause of CLS, it can also get you out of CLS. Uh, grid is very good at defining row sizes, which can be given a size before the content has appeared, or even a minimum size so that when that lazy content does load, it's again, less of a shift and less shift will reduce the penalty that you'll incur for that. Yes, um, that is definitely one to think about as well. And finally, uh, interactions can cause changes in sizes too, and that's a user-initiated layout shift. So for example, that might be on focus or on hover. You might move over an element, which also moves other elements unexpectedly, and therefore it shifts the entire layout. Or you scroll to the end of the experience and more content is loaded via an infinite scrolling experience. This can also cause layout shift in your UI. So just other things to think about um, when you're interacting with the site. Nice. Uh, well, that just leaves us with kind of tools and tips. So we've gone over the main offenders. These are really good things to be thinking about. And then here's a few of our tips for kind of combating CLS. And one of the first things that we want to mention, especially because we know the Chrome team is going to come want us to mention this as well, uh, that there's a difference between lab testing and field testing with CLS. What all right? CLS is all about um, the, like later loading of things, um, late discovery, or all sorts of these things that have to do with timing. And timing is going to be due to your network. And if you have a slow network, the timing could be very different. So if you have a fast network, maybe it was able to not have a lot of CLS, fetch things quickly. If it's slow, it could go slow. So anyway, there's a difference between lab tools and field tools. So whether you're testing on an actual device or you're just testing uh, you know, simulations, and they want you to know that I, I'm sure it's no surprise, but those things can be different. So the Chrome UX report or Lighthouse or just simple page loads, they might not reflect the reality when using these online tools because they're on the cloud and they have a lot of resources. So test as much as you can in the field on actual devices. Uh, you can also test with a tool called Lighthouse. So Lighthouse will show you which elements with screenshots are offending elements for CLS. So it's worth running this on your page and inspecting uh, the tips and tricks that it has for you. It actually gives you some advice for how to reduce CLS and other Core Web Vitals metrics, how to improve those. So you can access Lighthouse in Chrome DevTools. Um, there's a few different ways that you could add an extension to. Um, also, as a side note, Lighthouse will often show you which elements were shifted, not necessarily what causes that shift. So if JavaScript inserts an add into the sidebar, the report will show all the children underneath it as shifted, but it won't necessarily be able to say that the add was the cause of that shift. So you might have to go and inspect yourself and then see why things are happening. Um, you might also want to open the network panel and see how things are loading in. That might help. Um, or even snapshots of the page load, which are in Lighthouse too. Oh, good call with the snapshots. That's a great way to debug because you can go back in time, right? You'd be like, what happened right before yeah. my shift? Um, awesome. 
And the last tip here for inspecting and, and testing is the performance panel in DevTools. Uh, it can highlight layout shifter. You might even see the little badges in there that say CLS. Um, you can find them also in the, in the experience section. This will highlight in red on the actual page too, the areas of shift. So that's kind of nice. You get an in-page overlay and it will also show them in the timings area of the audits. So that's where you'll see those badges. It'll tell you um, CLS and other things that are going bad uh, mostly in there. But yeah, use the performance panel. Nice. Love that. So that's all we have for our show on Layout Shift. If you have any questions, we'd love to answer them on the show. Just tweet us with the hashtag CSS Podcast. You can find me on uh, the X at Yuna. That's U-N-A. <laughs> on the X. We're going to have to get used to this verbiage. And I'm on the X <laughs> site also as Argyle Inc. A-R-G-Y-L-E-I-N-K. And your question could help a lot of people. Shoot it to us shoot to us. Also, if you like the show, please share this with a friend, a coworker, um, someone that you mentor, people that you went to school with or boot camp with, uh, because those reviews help other people discover our show. You sharing it with other people help them discover our show even faster. Um, and that helps us have more time to create content for you. Awesome. Looking forward to your questions, y'all. Thank you. <laughs>